from Midland, Odessa, and Big Spring. We're Basin Trusted, Basin Proud. This is Big Two First News at 11. Well, good morning. I'm Amanda Mason. It's great to have you with us for Big Two First News at 11. Well, new at 11 with the help of an Odessa Crime Stopper tip, Odessa police arrested a man in connection to an aggravated robbery and stabbing at a local DK on 10th Street in Dixie. Police arrested and charged this man, Giovanni Ibarra Martinez, with aggravated robbery, a first degree felony. Martinez turned himself in last night around 6.30. Odessa police are also still attempting to identify these two men in connection to the aggravated robbery and stabbing at the DK. Now, both men fled the scene in a blue four-door sedan, which was driven by a woman. Any information in reference to the identity of these other two men, you are encouraged to call Odessa Crime Stoppers. A proposed nuclear waste facility is causing quite a stir in Anders County. Big Two's Felice Romero has a story. Be responsible for your own waste. That's what I have to say. For many community members, the thought of storing 40,000 tons of deadly nuclear waste in Andrews County is a cause for concern. I don't want it in my backyard. I don't want it in my children's backyard. We did not come up with this waste. WCS says the waste would be stored above ground in dry casks before getting transported to its permanent location. If, we were to, if there were to be an accident, we are talking about permanent contamination. A risk that this concerned mother says isn't worth it. When we are talking about permanent contamination. We are talking about might as well just leave because this, wherever the contamination would, would have been produced or, you know, the leak or whatever, there would be no life whatsoever. Many oil companies and environmental groups also spoke at the news conference opposing the idea. It's up to Texas and New Mexico to decide whether you're going to let it happen. It was snuck in, really. Uh, the promise was made that it was just paint cans and that, whoops, oh well, it is nuclear material. Oh, well, it's never going to be high-level waste. It's just so-called low-level waste. Well, now it's high-level waste that they want to bring in. And I also want to point out that even low-level waste is not low-risk. Nuclear Information and Resource Service says this isn't the first time the company has brought up this kind of proposal. This kind of threat has been posed on communities across this country since the late 1970s. According to Dorigo, exposure is the biggest reason many places like New York, Illinois, and South Carolina have passed up on the proposal in the past. This is the place where there's the most radioactivity. And it lasts, it's hot now, it's dangerous now, and it's going to stay dangerous literally for millions of years. In Midland, Feliz Romero, Big Two News. Three administrative judges are hearing arguments for and against the WCS proposal. It started today at the Midland County Courthouse at 9 a.m. The hearing is open to the public, and Big Two's Feliz Romero will continue to cover the story. A 22-year-old man is dead after a crash in Gaines County. Well, it happened on US 180, about four miles east of Seminole. According to reports, Marcus Ortega was on a Harley-Davidson motorcycle when he drifted into the opposite lane. That's when he hit an F-150 truck head-on. Ortega was pronounced dead at the scene. No one else was hurt. A Midland man was taken to the hospital with life-threatening injuries after being hit by a truck yesterday afternoon. What happened on Big Spring Street and California Avenue? Police say the man was crossing the road that was not a designated crosswalk when he was hit by the truck. The driver has not been ticketed. And a man is badly hurt after being hit by a car. The driver of the car left the scene. Police are now looking for this man. It happened at the Barn Door Steakhouse parking lot on Anders Highway Monday around 1.30 a.m. Police say the man driving a light-colored four-door pickup truck hit the 62-year-old man. The man was taken to the medical center hospital with serious injuries. If you have any information, please contact Odessa Crime Stoppers. Two people from Odessa have been arrested in Nebraska on homicide charges. They were identified as 21-year-old Caitlin Gabriel and 25-year-old Jerry Gilbert. Police say they didn't give up easily. Nearby homes had to be evacuated as hostage negotiators dealt with the two. They eventually came out and were taken into custody. Big Spring continues to make progress towards better water quality. Well, the city council has chosen a bid for the water line replacement project. Bid 2's Jiam Kin was at the council meeting on Tuesday, and she has the details. 
Motion to accept the bid passes 7 0. City of Big Spring making strides toward better water quality. Mayor Shannon Thomason says it's been an issue residents know all too well. We're out in West Texas, we're in a desert, so water quality is going to be an issue for any city out here. You know, we're doing the best we can. We've got uh, an, an aging delivery system. Some as old as 50 years. But councilmen and women voted to accept a bid at $890,254.80 to replace almost a mile long of water pipe. Pipelines. It's going to be good. I think it's going to be real good. It's something that needs to get done. A six-inch line on the residential delivery line of Lamar Street, a 10-inch line at the water treatment plant, and a 20-inch line on Donley Street, where the pavement caved in, sending a woman's car to plunge in head first. Hopefully less uh, uh, shutdowns because of uh, broken mains. In addition, we hope to see some imp improvement in water quality in those, issues, in those areas. The initial estimate for the project was $1.1 $1 million. With money left over from the budget, the council may consider amending the budget to add another road in the next council meeting. We're working on it and, and hope to get some improvements in place. I'm Gian Kim, Big 2 News. The accepted bid is with Lupe Rubio Constructions, and the mayor says replacing more pipelines, upgrading the water treatment plan, and working with the Colorado River Municipal Water District to improve the quality of input water is next on the list. The Edgar County Commissioner's Court funding for Coliseum improvements were approved yesterday. A 41,000 square foot horse stall barn is currently being built. The nearly $4 million is going to the Coliseum and will be completely funded by hotel occupancy tax. That means no local property tax money will be used for the project. The addition of this will allow us to host uh, competitive rodeo events and uh, horse shows um, 365 days out of the year. Um, and we really feel it's going to impact our event load. Crews are now in the process of pouring footing for the foundation and the project is expected to be finished by January of 2020. Also in the Edgar County Commissioner's Court meeting yesterday, another issue was brought to the table. There's a desperate need for jailers in Edgar County. A special program to draw more to the area was presented to Edgar County Commissioners. Sheriff Mike Griffith stood in front of the commissioners asking for a jailer sign-on bonus promotion program to be put in place. Currently, the office needs to fill more than 50 jailer positions. Would get a, a stipend, a monthly stipend, uh, which would be more, more money in their pocket and it would be a savings to the county actually. Uh, you know, try to, you know, target the, the younger population, you know, uh, that, that need jobs. Because of the short staff, he is willing to compromise with commissioners to move forward. Odessa College is announcing a new initiative to teaching students faster in the Permian Basin. Teaching in Three is a program under the OC2 UTPB program. The program is designed to meet the urgent need for teachers in the basin. Most of the courses will take place on the OC campus, and registration is limited to the first 100 students. So if you're interested, contact the college soon. The UT system is recognizing teachers who make a big difference, and that includes two from UT Permian Basin. Stephanie Fife, a lecturer in the Department of Psychology, and Dr. Jason Lagapa, an associate professor of English, are among 27 educators who will be recognized during the Board of Regents meeting in August. Each recipient will receive a certificate, medallion, and $25,000. Basiners are counting down the days until the Tall City Blues Fest. Well, the annual event will take place in downtown Midland this weekend. The lineup includes 22 performers, education workshops with artists, vendors, and even a silent auction. Gates open at 7 Friday night. Well, according to local doctors, while school is out and donors are enjoying vacation, this summer the blood supply in the basin has become increasingly low. To help replenish local hospital supplies, Vitalant is hosting a blood drive this weekend on Saturday. Now on Saturday, two blood mobiles will be on site in the parking lot of Midland Donor Center on Midkiff Road. Now the blood drive will be from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. and the first 55 donors will receive one shelter bond ticket. Volunteers 
who donate blood must be at least 16 years old, weigh at least 110 pounds, and be in good health. Now, additional height and weight requirements apply to donors 22 and younger, and donors who are 16 or 17 must have signed permission from a parent or guardian. And according to Vitalant, you can save up to three lives with one donation. To become a donor, you can sign up there on the website on your screen or come in as a walk-in. The George W. Bush Childhood Home is opening its doors to the public for their second Summer Sunday Sunday. Well, if you stop by from 2 to 4 in the afternoon, you can get free ice cream, half price tours, and yard games for the whole family. Now, the goal of the local landmark is to educate the public about the life of the Bush family. A federal appears, appeals court says that Texas must follow through with certain fixes to the foster care system. Kids in a group home must have 24-hour supervision and the state must study caseload sizes. But the Fifth Circuit also removed other requirements previously set by the federal district judge. This lengthy lawsuit has been tied up in the courts for years after reports of abuse, neglect, and high caseload numbers. The Texas chapter of the National Association of Social Workers says it's critical the state takes action to ensure kids in the foster care system aren't left behind. These are kids who we know face challenges. We know these kids age out of care and end up in our criminal justice system. They end up with substance abuse issues. They end up um, pregnant. They end up um, with uh, homeless, lacking um, sometimes really the, the jobs they need to survive. A spokesperson for the Texas Attorney General's office says it's still reviewing the decision and considering whether it will appeal the latest ruling. Well, coming up on Big Two, first news at 11, a firefighter who can't see red or green gets a special surprise. And our temperatures outside really beginning to heat up. We're already checking in into the lower 90s out there across Odessa Midland and parts of the rest of the basin and West Texas, as you can see, 92 for Wink, 92 Odessa Midland. It's 91 degrees in Fort Stockton. Coming up on that full forecast, we'll go over exactly how warm we could get today, plus those next best rain chances all ahead right after the break. Coming up on Big Two. Saturday, July 13th, come to the Summertime Lake Sale at Hidden Shores and get your new 1,200-square-foot barn dominium shell on two acres of lake access property for only $69.9. Affordable large acreage lake lots are rare. Save $10,000 off your new barn dominium shell and two-acre lake access home site on sale for only $69.9. Plus, new lakefront inventory will be released during the sale. Excellent land financing is available. Call now, 866-952-6345. I was a passenger in my friend's car when another vehicle rear-ended us. I suffered whiplash from the left side of my body. After the accident, I got behind on my medical bills. I called Lone Car Associates, and they really made the process easy for me. My name is Marquita Friday. I'm an actual client. If you got injured in a car accident, call Lone Car Associates. They help me. They can help you, too. Lone Car Associates, the strong arm. Call 800 then all sevens. The following commercial is brought to you by the Colonial Pen Life Insurance Company. I'm Alex Trebek, here to tell you about the Colonial Pen Program. If you're age 50 to 85 and looking to buy life insurance on a fixed budget, remember the three P's. What are the three P's? The three P's of life insurance on a fixed budget are price, price, and price. A price you can afford, a price that can't increase, and a price that fits your budget. I'm 54. Alex, what's my price? You can get coverage for $9.95 a month. I'm 65 and take medications. What's my price? Also $9.95 a month. I just turned 80. What's my price? $9.95 a month for you, too. If you're age 50 to 85, call now about the number one most popular whole life insurance plan. Available through the Colonial Pen Program. It has an affordable rate starting at $9.95 a month. No medical exam. No health questions. Your acceptance is guaranteed. And this plan has a guaranteed lifetime rate lock. So your rate can never go up for any reason. So call now for free information. And you'll also get this free beneficiary planner. 
Call 1-800-357-5595 for your free information and your free gift. That's 1-800-357-5595. 1-800-357-5595. Call now. This segment of Big 2 News brought to you by Ashley Home Store. And now, your Big 2 Local Weather Authority forecast. We warn you first with meteorologist Derek Sibley. Well, good morning, everybody. Here's a live look outside downtown Midland looking really nice out there. Crystal clear blue sky. We got some dry air filtering in, and that's why you're seeing the picture you see out there right now. Thanks to that West Texas State Bank Sky Tracker for this live image of the downtown Midland area. Our satellite radar picture does show plenty of clear skies out there. You can see not too much in the way of clouds. Any clouds that we have are down towards our south and not bothering us, so that's why we are looking crystal clear out there, looking really, really nice, and that will continue to filter its way in. Now, our temperatures are taking advantage of that as well, and I'll show you that here coming up in just a second. But this is what we are forecasting here for us. The rest of the day looking pretty clear. Maybe a couple of spotty showers here and there as we get to the afternoon, but overall, I think we're going to be in pretty good shape. And as we head forward into time, heading into Thursday tomorrow, we do expect a couple of thunderstorms potentially forming down towards Fort Stockton. What's happening is we got some mid level disturbances moving through the atmosphere. It's really going to help spark up those rain chances and a few thunderstorm chances too. But as you can see, mainly concentrated from the southern basin and towards the mountains region here of West Texas. And then we begin to dry out and clear out of here as we progress into the nighttime hours tomorrow night, looking rather nice. Heading into Friday, same deal here, looking pretty clear out there, thanks to dry air filtering its way in and high pressure really in control of our weather environment. Now we are watching a tropical disturbance. This is actually a designated now as potential tropical cyclone two, or one rather, meaning that uh, tropical depression or tropical storm is very possible here in, during the next day or so. Probably today it will become formed. And these are the models that I overlaid over here. And basically you can see they're tracking their way well off to the north, off, off towards the west and north, approaching Louisiana. So it looks like our neighbors in Louisiana are going to be dealing with a pretty significant storm, possibly even a hurricane, low-end Category 1 hurricane, making landfall and getting plenty of heavy rainfall, maybe even some power outages too. So something that they have to be concerned about. It doesn't look like it's going to be a concern for us, but the west, but the tech Texas coast might be dealing with a storm too. It's still a little bit too early to call on that. So we have these winds here coming out of the west, southwest around five, five to ten miles per hour. We have this boundary though, as you can see, moving through the northern basin around nighttime here, around uh, tonight, and this should be moving its way through. And as it does so, that's going to really begin to shift our winds here, more coming out of the north and east, and that should help cool down our temperatures just a little bit. As it does so, it will be a little bit breezy out there with winds around 15 to 20 miles per hour at times. But overall, definitely a nice day because our temperatures are going to start to feel that we're dropping back into those 90s. Today, though, we have to get through these triple digits once again. We're talking 104 degrees. We have the southeasterly winds in place around 10 to 15 miles per hour under those mostly sunny weather conditions we have in store for you. Yesterday, we was very hot. We saw a high temperature recorded at Odessa Midland of 106 degrees. That broke the record of 104 that was set back in 2009, just fairly recently, actually. Today, I'm forecasting a high of 104, and that's way above the normal 95. But more importantly, we could be approaching those record highs once again. That record was set back in 1964 of 105 degrees. So. Definitely going to be another warm one out there, regardless if we approach the record high or if we break it. We do have the sunny and dry conditions in place here for us today, but don't worry, we got those temperatures cooling down here thanks to that boundary that's moving through, and that will help cool down those temperatures. Here's a look at those northern basin highs. We are forecasting highs generally into those triple digits once again. 101 to 104 is the forecast high here, and for the central basin we go, we are looking a little bit warmer into the 103 to 104 range. Certainly possible that. Some of us could hit the 105 degree mark once again, like it was yesterday. And for the Trans Pecos, anywhere from 101 to 106. The mountains here also warm for this time of the year, into the mid 90s. Definitely don't really see that this time of year for the mountainous terrain. Here's a look at that seven day forecast. We do have hot and sunny weather conditions today. Stay, be careful out there. Drink plenty of fluids and stay hydrated. Stay in the shade if you have to be outside. And then heading into tomorrow, temperatures really begin to cool down. Back to normal with a 20% risk here of some showers and thunderstorms.
Well, I'm definitely looking forward to tomorrow. Me too. <laughs> it's definitely going to be such a huge relief in these temperatures. Yeah, it's amazing how much just even four degrees can make a big difference. But yeah. today people can really expect to hit that 104 around like 4 p.m. Yeah, I think it's probably going to be around 4 or 5 p.m. or so. That's when we usually hit our peak daytime heating. So certainly possible that we could hit 104 very close to that record high. Wow. Well, thanks for those tips earlier, though, Derek. That's important. Drink lots of water and sunscreen. But, Derek, you have to check this out, though. This is a sweet story. A Douglas County firefighter in Georgia recently learned he was colorblind, got a special surprise last week that brought him to tears. Well, 21-year-old Spencer Curradine said he didn't know he suffered from red-green color blindness until a co-worker noticed it on a hike. Well, his friend secretly gave him a colorblind test, and when he realized his friend couldn't see red and green, he ordered him special glasses. Well, the other firefighters chipped in and surprised Carradine with his glasses on July 3rd. And get this, his first request was to see the American flag. That is unbelievable. Well, I, I heard about those colorblind glasses. And, you know, I can relate to him because I actually am red-green colorblind myself. No. Yes. I had no idea. Yep, absolutely. Took a colorblind so test long ago when I was a kid. you can see this flag right now. I can, you know, it's funny. I, I, <laughs> I can see I, no I, I can see the shades, oh, but okay. it's just you know there's certain colors in there. Like if you if you were to give me a colorblind test, yeah, you know I couldn't actually pick out the picture in those in those circle of color dots. Oh, yeah. So well, you do weather fantastic. Yeah, thank so. you. I appreciate that. I'm pretty sure I'm seeing those colors well. You guys are so, safe. Yeah, it's you guys good. are okay. Trust me, I can pick those out. Um, but it's just interesting. Yeah. Wow. Well, just a sweet story. Well, thank you all so much for that weather. And yeah. also still to come on Big T First News at 11, new military policies won't stop one National Guard troop from serving. The story and more after the break. Join Planet Fitness for $1 down. Why struggle? Leave the gym to us. Join for $1 down, $10 a month, no commitment. Ends July 16th. New cardio equipment and more at our Odessa location. Join our Midland or Odessa location. Offer ends July 16th. Hello, folks. I'm Rosalie Michaels, and I'm here with former Dallas Cowboys quarterback Danny White, and we're talking about home safety. Thanks so much for coming in, Danny. Thanks for inviting me. So tell us, why are you so passionate about people protecting their homes? Rosalie, most of the success that I had as the Dallas Cowboys quarterback came as a result of other people protecting me mm -hmm. and the confidence that I had that they would protect me. Well, I think that applies to life as well. You know, everybody deserves protection. And what's more important than protecting your home and the people you love? Uh, absolutely. You know, our homes, our pets, our family, all very important. So I heard that you've been working to come up with an offer to help people protect their homes. Is that right? That's right. Our mission is to ensure that everyone receives the protection that they need. So we've come up with an offer that's very affordable that I think all the folks at home will absolutely love. Listen to this. We're offering a brand new home security system free. $850 value, free of charge. And this is the new wireless system. It doesn't require any pre-wiring, doesn't require any unnecessary holes in your walls. So everyone watching today can take advantage of this limited time offer. Wow, and it's kind of hard to beat free. <laughs> so tell us about monitoring. Well, you get 24-7 monitoring for burglar, fire, and medical emergencies from ADT, the number one home security company in America. And professional installation is only $99, and monitoring is about a dollar a day. Trust me, there's no better investment you can make for the things that matter most. And that is very affordable. But is there anything else you could give callers who <laughs> want to take advantage of this offer? As a matter of fact, the first 20 callers to order will receive a $100 Visa gift card plus two wireless keychain remotes free of charge. So call now and we'll help you protect your home. To get this special offer, call 855-209-6834. That's 855-209-6834. Spokesperson for Robert White. You get hurt in a car wreck and there are too many households. You need someone to just take care of it. Help dealing with the insurance company? Check. Someone fighting for the money you deserve? Check. Call me. It's just that easy. Coming up on Big Two. We are Basin Trusted, Basin Proud. Amanda Mason. Meteorologist Derek Sibley. You're watching Big Two First News at 11. 
The face of the U.S. military is changing, at least in the Minnesota National Guard. Well, one female commander and transgender soldier is leading the way in a more inclusive military. My entire career, I've really worked my butt off. Major Terrence Robertson is serving his second deployment dealing with crisis action planning at Camp Arif John in Kuwait. We make the long-range plans for what's going on in the area of operation. Major Robertson is a commander over hundreds of troops. It's a lot different from the role he played during his first deployment. First deployment was in 2011-2012 to Zabo, Afghanistan, and I was on an agriculture development team. Back then, Terrence was Tara, the first female in Minnesota to serve in a combat zone. Terrence transitioned in 2016 after then Secretary of Defense Ash Carter lifted the ban on allowing transgender troops to serve openly. Within the unit that I'm in right now and within Minnesota, no, I don't feel marginalized. In the broader picture, it feels that way. Yes. Attacked by a new policy, his wife back home in St. Paul says she worries every day. This deployment has been incredibly stressful, not just because my partner is gone, but because we have an administration that is openly hostile to transgender service members. That adds a whole other layer. The new policy took effect April 12th. It says no one who was taking hormones or has transitioned to another gender will be allowed to enlist. Currently grandfathered in before they implemented the most recent policy in April. I don't have any intention on, on stopping serving. I've been in 14 years. I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. Julia Robertson Bayless says her husband is a fighter who refuses to let anything stand in the way of serving his country. He's definitely had some experiences and he will never he will never talk about those experiences um, because he he wants to put his work first and be seen for his work. Julia says she is proud of her husband and is counting the minutes until he returns home. Robertson and other members of the Minnesota National Guard's Red Bulls should return home before the end of this month. Well stay with us we'll have more news and also another look at your 70 forecast after the break.